Welcome to Online Worship with Sandy Springs United Methodist Church for Sunday, June 25th. I am Candace Johnson, our Director of Family Ministries, and I am so glad to welcome you today. This summer, some of our in-person worship services are not available to be live streamed, so we are excited to revisit our Faith Flow series in online worship. This is a series that dives into the practices that form us as disciples. Practices including worship, connect, grow, serve, share, and give. I have a few announcements before worship begins. Next Sunday, July 2nd, those who join us in person can enjoy a supper Sunday, which means a potluck love feast. So if you're going to be here in person, bring one of your favorite 4th of July foods to share as we enjoy a time of scripture, singing, praying, reflecting, and gathering around God's table together. We are also hosting a blood drive on July 3rd in the Fellowship Hall. There is a link on our website to register to donate blood if you're able to do that. There's also still space available in our Children's Worship Arts Camp coming up in July 10th through 14th. You can email me or check out our website for more information. Now, as we turn our hearts and minds to worshiping God together today, know that whoever you are, wherever you find yourself on your faith journey, you are a beloved child of God, and we are so glad that you are here. Today we continue in our worship series based on our new faith flow that you can see here. And today the characteristic of discipleship that we are exploring is growth. What does it mean to grow in faith? And as we do that, we're gonna hear Paul's exhortation to the Romans where he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God is our foundation for spiritual growth. So I invite you to rise now as you're able and join me in saying our call to worship. We have gathered here this morning to worship God. We have come seeking comfort, inspiration, community, and insight. We have come to open ourselves to the power of God's presence in our midst. We have God's help in our learning and in our growing. Let us worship with open hearts and minds. We worship with open hearts and minds. You may be seated. We worship with open hearts and minds. Our scripture this morning comes from Romans chapter 12. Listen for the word of God. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Hello. Please join me in a quick moment of prayer. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God. This verse, I believe, is at the core of GROW, this area of our faith flow that we're focusing on in worship today. And while as the director of family ministries, focused on faith formation and a Christian educator, I might be a little biased. It's one of my favorite areas. I am pretty excited about it. Faith flow is our discipleship pathway, guidelines for how we as a community of faith and individuals within that community figure out what discipleship is, where we are on that discipleship journey, and how to engage in ministry together to keep on growing in discipleship. So that grow and discipleship keeps popping up no matter what area we're talking about. But this area under faith flow, under grow, focuses on learning Christian education, spiritual disciplines. And today's scripture comes from the book of Romans in the New Testament. But really, we could have looked at a lot of scripture to talk about how we grow in faith. We could go all the way back to Deuteronomy in the Old Testament as our basis for this area of ministry. Back to when Moses... We're just going to... All right, we're back. See, we went way back to when Moses and the Hebrew people did not have electricity and technology. We could have gone back to when they escaped slavery and they're really trying to figure out what it means to follow God in their own new community. God is giving them a lot of guidelines, a lot of rules, way more than just the Ten Commandments. And in chapter 11, verses 18 to 20, Moses shares the following message with the recently freed Hebrew people from God. You shall put these words of mine in your heart and soul. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and fix them as an emblem on your forehead. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you are at home and when you are away when you lie down and when you rise, write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Seems like God is pretty serious about paying attention to all of these words and teaching them to one another, posting them everywhere. I don't think Moses could ever have imagined the very country chic art available in Target or Hobby Lobby with beautiful scripture printed on it that we have available to us today when he shared this message with the Hebrew people. But he did know that God wanted the people to study, learn, carry with them, and pass on everything God was telling them. People needed to have God's word constantly in their thoughts and hearts and as the basis of what they were doing. As we engage in practices that are meant to help us grow in faith today, we're not meant to simply memorize verses and use them as cute signs on our walls, although there's nothing wrong with that. That's why coming back to Paul's reminder in Romans is really important. These words that are passed down from generation to generation are, are more than just words. God tells us to write them on our hearts to let them transform who we are so that we stand out from the rest of the world. What we encounter as we grow in our faith should change us. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Not conforming to the world is really challenging to do. We are constantly formed by all of the things we are interacting with, which is what we talk about when we say the world. We're formed by the people, places, 
music, books, TV, social media, art, advertisements, anything we encounter. And I am not here to tell you that those things are evil and you should ban them from your home or your life. I enjoy some social media, some TikTok, a whole lot of Netflix, just like anybody else does. Ultimately, the world is all made by God, and I hope all of it becomes what God intends for it, which is why the mission statement of every United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Christ for the transformation of the world, not just the transformation of ourselves. We are formed by the world around us. There's no escaping that. We're just called to take time to look at how we're being formed, how we think, what we value, how we act, especially toward others, which shows far more about our values than anything we say, and not be conformed to those things that don't reflect God. Which means we have to figure out what does reflect God, and then be transformed continually by the renewing of our minds to the things that reflect God. Being transformed so that we will be able to discern the will of God might begin with a dramatic life changing moment. Kind of like when Jesus called Zacchaeus by name and told him to come down from his spot in the tree because Jesus was coming over for dinner to his house that day. Suddenly, a man who had conformed to the world's way of taking as much money and power as he could, as po was possible, was transformed by God. He saw Jesus, Jesus saw him, and he knew the will of God. He was no longer conforming to the things the world believed. He was a new man. Dramatic, life-changing transformation happens when people encounter Jesus. Even those of us who have been lifelong church folks can have Zacchaeus-like transformation of ideas and ideologies if we're willing to be open to God's ongoing work in the world and in us as we engage in reading scripture or join in robust conversation in a small group or learn or hear a new perspective that transforms our understanding of some aspect of our faith. We might have those moments as we grow in our faith when an idea we've held for a long time changes through some relationship, through some experience where we see Jesus and Jesus really sees us and we realize we need to make some change and grow in our lives. Still, I imagine that for many of us who have experienced church in some form before, for a long time before, seems unlikely that we're going to have massive life-altering, give back all of your money in this instant change like Zacchaeus today. And I get that. I was baptized as an infant in 1980 in a United Methodist Church in the same baptismal gown that my grandfather was baptized in in a Methodist Church in 1912, all of which means I cannot remember a time in my life or in generations of my family before in which God and Jesus were not a part of my consciousness. But that thing from earlier about being formed by the world and the influences around us has also always been a part of my consciousness. And a part of all of our consciousness, no matter how long church and God and Jesus have been a part of them as well. So even as someone who is the result of generations of some form of Methodism, and someone who has a master's degree in theology, I have to be reminded regularly not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by God, to renew my mind and discern God's will in my soul, in my heart, in my spirit every day. I have been and continue to be transformed 
by encountering Jesus over and over again in my life, slowly but surely. In Sunday school classes growing up, in my lovely Methodist church, in youth group as a teenager, in Bible studies, in devotional reading and journaling, listening to podcasts, having discussions in our racial justice reading group, listening to the insight of children and youth in this congregation as we engage scripture together, in our sistering circle conversations. Over and over again, I had the chance to experience God's living word in a new way, to not be conformed to the world of expectations that I bring with me, the limitations I've put on God and myself. Instead, to be transformed, to discern the will of God, to grow. It's a lifelong process for each and every one of us, because even if we have that dramatic, life-changing Zacchaeus moment, we're not done. We continue to grow after that. As a good United Methodist, I've heard John Wesley say, we go on to perfection throughout our whole lives, no matter what heartwarming moment we have. And honestly, I find it relieving to have an area of life in which there's no pressure to have everything perfect today, because there is no area of my life in which anything is perfect today. We are all growing maybe at different speeds, maybe in different areas of our faith or different aspects we're interested in. So we all have different ways in which we will grow. There are lots of different ways that God reaches out to us to help us grow in our faith. It may be that Jesus has taught us a lot of different ways that Jesus has done that before. We have a lot of examples in the Gospels. Jesus taught with stories in parables. Jesus taught with cute phrases like the Beatitudes. Jesus had small group conversations with just a few disciples. Jesus gave large hillside lectures. Jesus had small meals with people. Jesus taught through prayer. Jesus taught through dramatic events like walking on water. Jesus used examples from nature and everyday life. Jesus even used object lessons like a cursed fig tree, all different ways to reach out and help transform the disciples and others. We, too, will grow through many different ways. It might be traditional Bible studies and classes, it might be small groups, personal devotion, book groups, even activities like baking bread together. Activities that help us reflect on our faith in a new way. Or maybe watching a movie with your family and afterwards asking, how did I see God at work in that story? When we're willing to grow in our faith, no matter what age we are, how many Bible studies we've been a part of, or if this is something entirely new to us, how many times we've read the Bible, or if it's something that fully intimidates us, how long we've been a part of the church. When we're willing to come to the body of Christ, God's living word, open to the possibility that our minds and hearts and souls can be renewed and transformed, amazing things can and will happen. We offer each other an amazing gift being willing to grow together, to reflect on our lives and say, there's something for me to learn here with you about what God is doing in the world, what God is doing through me. We offer each other the gift of understanding together how we understand the world, how we know God, and opening up to new perspectives to be renewed for transformation together. As we continue together to grow, we will live out not only Paul's charge to the Romans to be transformed as individuals, 
to discern God's will, but also our mission as a church to transform the world for Christ. So let's jump into our faith flow together and grow.
Go with his blessing. You can find it in your bulletin in your heart as an angel. For all that God can do within us, for all that God can do without us, thanks be to God. For all in whom Christ lived before us, for all in whom Christ lives beside us, thanks be to God. For all the Spirit wants to bring us, for where the Spirit wants to send us, thanks be to God. Listen, Christ has promised to be with us in the world as in our worship. We go to serve him. Amen. Amen.